Hey, it's Dan. And Connie. We're uh, just coming live from Canada. Uh, thanks to all of our reviewers who have looked at our, our demo copies. This movie is for you and those trying out Chai Tea for Two on Tabletopia and TTS. So we would love to show you how the game quickly works. And here's a little preamble about Chai Tea for Two. As countries look for their next cup of tea, set sail your most delicious brews in Chai Tea for Two. Facing off as tea merchants, both players will secure tea clipper contracts while improving their tea plantations, producing green, white, oolong, yellow, black, and the dark pu'ers. It's a race! This is a standalone two-player game in the Chai series. And you'll be using dice worker placement to build your fields tableau. We'll be navigating T through different production steps with five unique action boards just at the top. Each round signals a new season of harvesting new teas as you specialize in matcha, bergamo, sweet teas, and more. At the start of the game, players set the end game condition to three, four, or five completed tea clipper contracts. Victory points are also gained by completing tea crates, collecting blooming teas, tableau bonuses, and each merchant's unique special tea. Yeah, so we're going to dive in with the share and do a sample round for you. Um, the first player is going to be, I believe, the last person who had tea. Mm -hmm. I had um, some rooibos spice chai this morning. I think you win. Uh, okay. I had Earl Grey yesterday. Awesome. Yeah, so I'll be using the blue dice. Connie's going to be using the red. And uh, yeah, basically right from the start, our fields are going to be different. You'll notice uh, the little harvest board up here. That's featuring different teas that both of us will be collecting at the start of each round. So for me being the first player, I get to move our little tea assistant one, two, or three spaces. Uh, before we do that, we're both going to pick a type of tea merchant. Uh, what's your favorite type of tea here, Connie? I am going to have to go with uh, prayer. Awesome. Fermented. Puer fermented. And mm -hmm. just a little bonus there that's kind of inspired by Connie. <laughs> and the black tea is kind of inspired by me. So I'm going to grab that one. Uh, you might notice here, and if you're playing on Tabletopia, you can do a little space bar. Um, that card, whether you're using the black merchant, oolong, green... Uh, white, yellow, or pu'er, you're going to be receiving one victory point for every um, card of that color. Whether it's a tea clipper, completed or not completed, or any card on your tableau, you'll be getting one more point. So really excited about that. If you're playing the advanced side, there's going to be a different ability for each card. So knowing that I have black and purple, in the game, I think we're actually going to just jump over to the number five. Again, I can go one, two, or three squares forward, uh, spaces forward rather, at the start of the game. Right now, both of us are going to receive a black and a green. So I'm just going to zoom out a little bit here. Mm -hmm. Black's going to go on the bottom. Just for speed, we're using one mouse. Black's going to go oh, over here on Connie's board. And now there's that little five. Um, both of us get to divvy up that number number however we like. Um, we can get unique T and put it to the bottom of our board. We can also use it for movement points. Movement is very important in this game because we're trying to race up these little T pieces to the top on their respective tracks. So the green's gonna hop to this area, then to this, one more up here, and then to the top. Black's going to take the root just to the side here and get to the top. Um, for me, I think I'm going to grab, let's see, some of the boats. Yeah, we got a yellow one. I think I'm going to add a white as well. So I've added two. They always have to be unique. I can't take five white tees, for example. Two, three, four, and five. What about you, Connie? Um, I am going to take a puer okay. and Good a call. white tea and a blue tea and let's go with a yellow. How I, many am I at? I think that's four. <laughs> that's four. Yeah, four unique teas. 
Okay, and then I'll take one more black. One more, all right. So Connie's going the heavy economy style. This is an engine builder. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to race to the top quickly here. So unique, right from the get go. So that five is actually going to flip over. You can use an F on Tabletopia, and then we're gonna move it to the other board. So little tea merchants in there. Uh, yeah, so real quickly, uh, let's roll actually. Whoa, there goes the screen. You can always do shift click and we're gonna roll all these guys. Oh, perfect. Oh, it's not bad. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna roll the red dice. Okay, mm. so we got the five action boards up here. We have our little T workers. The first one, I can play any kind of value to it, just one dice. There's a little lightning bolt up there, so that will allow me to do um, the harvest board action which is gain another T resource. That's always gonna go to the bottom of my board. So if I were to play that two there, maybe I'd grab a green, put them on the bottom. Pretty straightforward. Because this is an engine builder tableau, cards are gonna be very important. So we're gonna run through them real quick. Um, this board will allow you to play a dice that is equal or greater to the value shown. So that one right there for the Gen Macha card uh, which is actually popcorn, really cool, in green tea. I can play a one, two, three, four, five, or six. Whereas for um, this blooming tea here, in the four pip area, I could just play a four, five, or six value dice. Um, we're gonna hop over to the next board. Uh, this area right here, you can play any value, and that's going to allow me to move a card anywhere on my tableau. If you were to put a dice into one of these four spaces next to it in the palace, you can swap two cards and those cards will trigger as well. Let's say Connie really wanted to be the first player. She mm -hmm. could put any value dice into this area and then she'd grab the first player token. Um, or I could even put a dice in there just to make sure I'm first player for next round. And because there's a lightning bolt, that section of the board also resolves right away. Totally. So she'd grab first player and then we'd continue on. We're just alternating dice between us. Uh, the little action underneath, um, that's going to allow either of us to flip over all the cards that have been used. Some of them have a little flipping action because they're a really strong card. So if, for example, this uh, value two pip dice in the market, first flush, which is the first plucking of a T, um, when we use it, that card's going to flip over until it gets reactivated. Uh, boats are very important. This is all about T clippers. So you're going to need at least two dice of consecutive values. So for example, uh, which boat do you think you'd go for, Connie? I am probably doing the rainbow. Uh, excellent. So you could use, let's say a two, mm -hmm. three or... Two, three, four, if I wanted it desperately enough. Yeah, a one, two. You could do a one, two, three, four, five, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, looking at my numbers, I don't have a lot of consecutive sequences. I could just do a two, three. So she would probably beat me and do a two, three right away, just to maximize the values. Because there's a little time uh, symbol here, these cards will not resolve till the end of the round. Because the other player could come along and try to outbid you. For example, if Connie had first put a 1-2 here, it's going to alternate to me as the next player. I could come along and play a 2-3. So this happens immediately. We have a little duel here. Um, she could add a 3 in response, um, or even a 6, because 6s and 1s, they wrap around. They would still be consecutive. Uh, let's say she added the 3. Whoops. Oh, let me try to flip it back over. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> He's kind of trapped in there. Here, one sec. Be funny. This would uh, not happen in, in real life. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it would. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so Connie's outbid me. Mm -hmm. um, I can't add a one or a four to this. So I'm actually going to go to a different boat. You would just take up your dice, put them over here. Knowing that I'm the black tea player, the dart mouth has a black tea. 
so I'd be satisfied with that card. And Connie's happy with the rainbow. You're allowed to play up to four dice there, and of course, the higher consecutive sequence will always win. And again, these resolve at the end of the game. Um, yeah, so those cards will actually pop into the top part of your board. There's three slots for those, and when T pieces rush to the top, they automatically load onto those cards based on their recipe. If um, one of us grabs this area, one of these boats, this is actually the draw deck. So in this case, Connie would look at the top three cards and pick one of them, mm -hmm. returning the other two to the deck. That's also the case for the market. If you win the, um, the right to grab one of these cards, which happens right away, um, you're going to look at the top three cards and then grab one of them. Okay, uh, we're going to go to the T production board. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be placing dice of the same uh, sequence or type. So the person who, um, at the end of the round, because it also has a little time uh, hourglass there, who has the highest sequence, or sorry, not sequence, um, set of dice that are the same, they're going to get five movement points going up the board. If so you're... right now he's got three of my fours, mm -hmm. um, whereas if we take a look at his dice, oh, he actually can't make any right now. I can't, yeah. Let's say yeah. I have the two sixes, though. Yeah. If you had the two sixes, I would actually have a higher value because um, what would matter would be the number of dice over the pips on the dice. Totally. Um, let's say Connie had played two fours mm -hmm. beforehand, and then I played two sixes. She would immediately get bumped to the second row, mm -hmm. and the game would continue, but she is able to add more dice in the future. So let's say it came down to her last dice, and she added one more, then those three dice would Bump go to the top. Out again. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I'd be going over here. And she would get five movement points for her um, T pieces, and I would only get three at the end, which again resolves at the end of the round. Um, yeah, going back to the cards real quick. The Gen Matcha, if we were to uh, buy that, let's say it was my turn right now, I'm going to grab that card and add it to my tableau. You can play a card anywhere you want on the outside, just not at the top, because that's where the ships go. So there is uh, one, two, three, four going mm -hmm. on that side, four on the other side, and three on the bottom. So there's 11 slots for these cards. So if I were to get that Gen Matcha card, um, also noting that it has a victory point symbol, just that little uh, cup there with the one, I'll get one point at the end. I would place it adjacent to where I have mm -hmm. a green T because it will now bump it up. Even if I had 10 green T tokens in that uh, rectangle, they would all bump up to the next level. And that's automatic and immediate. Yep. So if I had a, another green card down here and another one on the bottom, and I were to get another green T piece, it would jump all the way to the top, kind of like a chain reaction. Uh, let's see here. Um, Connie is going to grab the three. So that's a fermentation card. It's pretty good for my ship that I want to. Mm -hmm. And then where are you going to put that one? I'm going to put it at the bottom. Okay. Mm -hmm. Actually, we could even put it down here. Ooh. Stylish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there we right. Go. So this one's kind of like a transformation card. It's going to change the Puer fermented into the oolong blues and it's going to change the oolong blues into the puer purples so in this case uh, the blue is turning into a purple purple into a blue they both bump up because they were both on the card there um, now if connie were to move that card let's say uh, right here move a card mm -hmm. i'll put it on the blue Oh, right, because you're getting the purple ship. Mm -hmm. So we go here. That's going to change into a purple. And it's going to bump up. Right into there. Mm -hmm. That's about as complicated as the cards go. 
Um, there's a couple more. We have uh, first flush, which we alluded to before. It has the symbol that it needs to be flipped over when used. So I think Connie also has a lot of um, T tokens at the bottom. So let's say she grabbed that one. Added it down here. Mm -hmm. Now that green's going to bump up. Yep. My blacks are going to bump up. Yeah, that'd be a very it's powerful one. very move. powerful one. Yep. So that card's going to flip over until she uh, flips it over again. And that would trigger all of those special cards to flip over and be mm -hmm. reused. Um, if Which this... I can't do on this turn because I have no more dice. <laughs> right. I guess on a future turn, you could even, uh, let's say, swap these two cards. That's uh, an action in the palace. And then you could flip over that card and it would immediately uh, trigger those blacks to go up. And then that card would uh, actually flip over again because it's being used. So you can never mess up a card just by looking at your board. If there is a card that is adjacent to something that um, can move, it automatically bumps up. Uh, let's see here. We have the Blooming Tea. We love Sushi Go, so we had to throw in set collection. Um, in this case, if you had three Blooming Teas on your board, they don't do anything, but they give you points. If you had three of them, you would receive six. Mm -hmm. If you had five, you would have 10 plus two, so you'd have 12, uh, and any further one, an additional two, of course. So there's a good, I believe, six in the deck of those. Mm -hmm. And the last one we have is a tea crate. So the tea crate can actually go anywhere on the board except for where the ships go. And um, tea tokens just go directly into the tea crates. So in this case, Daniel had a tea crate that wanted two black tea tokens, and when you get two of them in there, you get two victory points at the very end of the game. Uh, yeah, for whites as well. Mm -hmm. And in this case, I just had the one, so it's incomplete, mm -hmm. but, so I don't get the two. But if Not you, yet. Right. I would have to get a black somehow, and that automatically goes in just like a boat. Um, but even if I didn't complete the crate, if you remember, I'm the black tea merchant, so I would be receiving one point for that card, irregardless of it being filled up or not. Yeah, so that's kind of how cards work. Um, going quickly to the ships. Uh, let's give Connie the rainbow. <laughs> okay. So that rainbow will be placed at the top and anything that reaches the docks there, um, that's at the very top little area, they're gonna automatically load. So let's say Connie played the fermentation a couple more times and it kept bumping between the purples and the blues and eventually it got up here this one turned into a, a blue at some point the white was here uh, she would just need let's say three action points to bump them all in and she would be receiving five in this round so it might be you know just one two and then three four and five that ship's going to sell right away, so you'd just return those into the bags. Um, it's not totally limited supply. We've included quite enough, but if you ever run out, you could just use some other token for that. And she's going to take the card over here and flip it over for the end of the game. So if you remember at the very start in our little preamble, both players have to decide whether you're playing to three, four, or five boats. Um, three takes us roughly 25 minutes, and then there's five to 10 minutes for each further boat. Um, that's going to give her seven points, but also one more because the rainbow has a puer, which is her speciality. <laughs> so that's pretty much the game. Um, simple strategy from us. What would you say? Well, I mean, it depends on what your gaming partner is doing um That's one true. time i actually just collected blooming teas and yep. crates to try to break the game and um yeah i mean it worked out really well that daniel was collecting ships and um yeah but that strategy totally would have failed if we were both doing it and, right yeah so if someone's going for all mm -hmm. the blooming teas you gotta stop them yeah um, <laughs> the blooming tea has 10 points here just having four cards so be aware of that Tea crates can score you big points. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing we did 
um, neglect to mention just as a minor rule, um, there's really no bad dice rolls because you can use sequences anywhere, you can use sets, um, the six and the ones, they wrap around, so to speak. But if you really want to change your die, like let's say um, I really wanted those five uh, movement points at the end of the round, I could change that four into a six by just tossing out tea leaves. Each leaf that you toss out, you can go plus or minus on your die. So I would get rid of my white to bump them up to a five, and then from a five to a six by removing the green. So let's see if we can set it to a six. Perfect. Mm. So in this case, I would take my newly minted six die, plant it over here to Connie's surprise. Or maybe she thought of it all along. <laughs> And now he gets the five movement points and I only get the three. Yes, but at the massive expense of tossing two tea mm -hmm. leaves. So there are little surprises um, that you can put into there. Um, and just a friendly reminder, if you're short, some kind of tea piece that you really need. Like in my case, I only had the one black, but if I really wanted the other black to complete that crate, I would have put an additional die into the harvest area so that I could grab um, one more black token and that would automatically hop into there. So um, try to chain different things. Uh, for example, Connie would have had an amazing pu'er um, cycle going on. Like just looking over here, there's a pu'er mm -hmm. cake card. That would have been pretty epic. Let's say she had it on the bottom. It would have bumped up my pu'er's by two spaces or two movements totally yeah so the the one purple piece would immediately upon the start of a round or connie getting it um would jump up two and then she could just use the fermentation and other pieces to get it going note that the puer cakes also requires the card to flip over mm -hmm. just because it's a little more powerful doesn't have an extra vp but again connie is that purple puer player so she'll receive one point for the card mm -hmm. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, we like to play to about four ships. Five is the long mm -hmm. haul, but um, still enjoyable. And yeah, make sure to drink some tea while playing. Yeah. And that's it for us. If you have any questions, uh, shoot us an email at reviewers at steepgames.com. And totally looking forward to seeing other people play, whether it's on Tabletopia or YouTube. All right, have a great day. And enjoy. Bye for now.